Hi, welcome to Sue Marie P. My name's Sue and I like experimenting with spelt flour and I had a request from one of my viewers. Hi Vanessa. She wanted to see if I could make donuts with spelt flour and oat milk. I don't do much deep frying. I don't have a deep fry and I don't like using a lot of oil. So I've developed a baked version. So if you'd like to see how I make my baked spelt donuts jam filled, come with me and let's see. So first step, we need to heat some oat milk up. So I've got one cup or 250 mils, which I've already heated up just before I started filming. You can pop it in the microwave if you've got a microwave. I don't have a microwave, so I just do it on the stove top. And I'm gonna add in some butter. So I'm gonna add a quarter of a cup or 60 grams of butter. Now I usually use unsalted butter, but today I've run out. Um, I've been doing too much baking. Um, so I'm using salted butter and I thought I could probably get away with it in this recipe. Um, so I'm not going to add any extra salt. So I'm just going to mix that around so the butter melts. And hopefully my milk's still warm enough that that will happen. Yeah, so when I say warm, it's kind of like lukewarm to touch. So when you put, pop your finger in, because we don't want it too hot because it will kill, kill the yeast. So in this bowl on my stand mixer, I'll just take it off while I pop the flour in. I've got 300 grams of white spelt flour, which is about two cups approximately, but I'd highly recommend weighing it because when you want to repeat your recipe, weighing is more accurate for baking bread. Um, in here, I've got whole grain spelt flour. It's a light whole grain, so that's 200 grams, which is about a cup and a quarter, thereabouts. And I've got a quarter of a cup of white sugar. This recipe tastes better with a little bit of sugar added to the dough. So I want to just mix that around. Just let me grab a whisk. So that's just to combine everything. Now, if you were using salt, you'd pop your salt in now. So let's hook that on. And I'm going to add a little bit of water, but what I want to do is I want to mix everything up and then use my eye to check if I need water. So let's see what this butter's doing. I'm just going to beat it down a bit. My chunks were too big. And I've developed this recipe without any eggs in the dough. So if you did want to do it 100% plant-based, you could use a non-dairy butter um, with a plant-based milk. So in there, I'm going to add my yeast. I've got one little packet, seven grams. So that's about two and a half teaspoons. And I'm just going to let that sit there for about five minutes so it activates. It's Sometimes not completely necessary, but I just like to see that my yeast is still fresh and it bubbles up and so it's ready to have a really good dough. So, hey Siri, set a timer for five minutes. We'll let that do its thing. So I left my bubbly yeast mix for another five minutes. So that was 10 minutes in total. So now I'm gonna pour it into here, but I'll just start this on low as I'm pouring it in. And then we need to knead this for about three to five minutes. Spelt flour doesn't need as long kneading as um, regular flour because it's got shorter gluten fibers so you don't get, need to get that real stretchy elastic feel. And in this um, jug here, I've got some lukewarm water, lukewarm to touch. So I'm just gonna add a tablespoon at a time. We may need up to a quarter, but it's just easier if you just add a little bit at a time and then you can judge whether you need it or not. It's important to um, yeah, just adjust your water content depending on what flour you use. Because sometimes if you just use all white flour, you don't need as much water. If you add a little bit more of the whole grain flour, it soaks up more water. So I've done two. And it is good to have quite a hydrated dough. We want it to kind of like sticky but smooth. And you'll know when it's done when it starts pulling away from the side. So hey Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Okay, I'm gonna add one more. And I'm going to bump the speed up now to two on my stand mixer. I always like to stop it and check it to see what it's doing. And we're almost there. If you found that you think, oh no, I've added too much flour, oh, I've added too much water and it's still a bit runny, you can like add a little bit more flour in, but just do it, you know, in a couple of tablespoons at a time. Um, we'll keep going, but you can also add more flour when you're kneading it. That's what I was going to try and say. While that's still kneading, grab a bowl. I like to transfer it into like a medium glass Pyrex bowl. And I just drizzle it with oil. 
and this size is kind of perfect. I'm not sure of the litres um, because I know when it's risen to the top, it's ready. And just grab some plastic wrap already cut, ready to seal on the top. Now you can use a cloth, but what I find is when you use the plastic, it creates more of a sealed, humid environment and the dough actually rises, for me, tends to rise better. Got about 40 seconds to go. Look at that, that's looking really good. I'm gonna grab some of the oil and pop it on my hands. And if you can get used to handling a, a softer, stickier dough, um, it, you will ensure that you have fluffy buns. You don't want your dough too dry. I'm just gonna scoop all that out. Oh, I've also tested this recipe with um, pea milk. I've been experimenting with pea milk as well, and it also turned out really well with that. So if you're somewhere and you're using pea milk too, you can try baking it with pea milk. Just going to swivel it around that oil and let that sit there, covered for an hour. My kitchen's quite warm. There's no windows open. Hey Siri, set a timer for 60 minutes. Then we'll come back when our dough baby's risen. So we're back for the next step. It's time to roll the dough. So I like using rice flour for spelt um, baking, but you can use more um, spelt flour. So I'm just dusting my pastry mat here. If you don't have a pastry mat, you can do it directly onto your bench or you can use a breadboard. So let's grab the dough out. So look at my little dough baby. It's lovely and fluffy. So I'm just going to pop it onto this floured mat. <laughs> that was quite a generous amount. Because I used all that oil, it's fine. It'll be able to cope with it. So I'm just knocking some of the air out. And now we want to roll it out. And we're going to do large donuts because the person that eats them in my house mainly is my husband. He's the donut lover. And he wanted large ones. I said, what size do you want? He <laughs> goes, large. It's quite thick. Um, I'm using my eight centimeter dough cutter. And we need to dust that in a little bit of flour. I wanted to give you a guide. All right. Grab my iPhone, that's the closest thing. And the dough is about, about the thickness of my iPhone. And I've got a tray on standby here with baking paper. So I'm gonna cut them all out really close together to maximize the space. And hopefully we get 12 or thereabouts. And you can use whatever shape you like. If you don't have a dough cutter, you can just roll them into balls and then flatten them out like you do like pizza balls. It's about 10 and I'll re-roll the scraps and I'll probably get two more. So I've got my um, spatula. So I'm just going to pull away the dough that's not in a circle and gently lift them up with this. You can use your hand, but I found that this was kind of easier. And if you don't, if you keep talking and don't move quickly, the dough sticks to it itself again. So let's take two, Sue. And we want to um, space them out quite um, spaciously. We've got a bit of a gap in between. So maybe it might be better to just um, cut and lift in the same time because it's sticking. Because my kitchen has now gotten quite hot. If you find it's kind of misshapen a bit as you lift it, just push it back into place. So if you're watching me doing this at home, remove the excess and then try and lift them. But if they stick again, just grab the cutter. I'm going to try and get them all on this tray if I can. So that's my first 10. I'm going to grab another tray and keep going and I'm going to cover those just with a cloth. And they need to rest for about 30 minutes until they puff up a bit more. And while I keep going with this, I'm going to just turn my oven on to preheat it to get it ready for those. We want it at 190, so it's quite hot. And I'll pop Fahrenheit measurement above, as usual. And that's fan forced. So just re-roll your scraps. You just form it into a ball again. I'm 
If you've got children, you might want to do a few smaller ones. Because that was the scrap, so I just flipped it over so I could get the back of it nice and smooth. I made these ones a bit fatter. So if you've got some scraps left over and you can't quite get the quite right shape, so just roll it like you're doing a dough ball for a pizza or a bun. So smooth it off, because I had too many creases in that. I'm smoothing it off on the pastry mat. So it's kind of a ball, and then I'm just going to flatten it. And it doesn't matter if you've got a few different shapes towards the end. And this one, I'm just going to do the same, because it's not really going to be the right circle. And this is another way you can do it if you don't have a big pastry cutter or cookie cutter. You can just do it by hand. Which I might just sprinkle a little bit of flour on top just so the cloth doesn't stick, which I should have done to the other one. So now we're back with our buns and I'm going to bake them for about 10 to 12 minutes until they're golden brown. And these are going to puff up in the oven. A little tip, which I do for all my bun baking, I'm going to add, in this one, a little ramekin of water to give a little bit of steam. It helps the buns be nice and fluffy. I'll pop the timer on for 10 minutes and keep an eye on them and just use my eye to see if they're done or not. And then I'll bake the second tray, this one here, um, once they come out, once they come out. So while your donuts are in the oven, you need to prep a few things. So in this big bowl, I've got a cup of just regular white sugar. So we're gonna roll those in, we're gonna roll the donuts in the sugar when they come out. So, and in here, I've got about three tablespoons of melted butter. So what we do, we coat the donuts with the butter and then roll them in the sugar. And that's what gives it that kind of like real donut feel. Because we're not baking them, or sorry, because we're not frying them, we don't have them coated in oil. We just need to add a little bit of moisture to the outside. I know it's not super healthy, but it gives them that authentic look. And to pop the jam in the center, I've got a piping bag here with kind of like a round nozzle. It's not my finest one. It's got kind of maybe, I don't know, half a centimeter, but just use what you've got. And I just stand it up in the jar, glass jar, just to help pop the jam in and in here I've got just a little bit over a quarter of a cup of raspberry jam. The raspberry jam we use um, is a French brand and it doesn't have very many chunky bits in but you can use strawberry jam or if you like custard you can make your own homemade custard and fill it with that. You can do lemon curd, whatever you like. So that's all set ready to go um, and to make the whole, a little tip from a video I saw on a bomboloni Italian video, um, they popped a hole in with the back of a fine wooden spoon um, just to give you the same amount. Or you can use a knife. I did the knife the other day and picked up each one individually and it was really complicated. So this one, I think it'll be a lot better. So get all those ready and then you'll be ready to do it when the buns come out. I can smell that they're done. I'm quite intuitive with baking now. And once I smell something's ready, I have to get it out. So I'm gonna grab the buns out, or the donuts. Okay, now we need to start constructing them to look like donuts. So the tray is still super hot. So I'm getting a second tray with a clean piece of paper which is cold so once I've coated them, rolled them, I can pop them on that tray. Um, and they're really hot so I'm going to go with tongs. Now they're not as round as I did the other day, they're a little bit um, flatter. So I probably shouldn't have, I should have rolled them a bit thicker but I think they'll be still fine. So do one at a time and roll them, just grab a spoon to help roll some of the sugar over. You've got to move fast, so they may not talk, I might just speed you up because otherwise they won't coat. And then once it's done, just pop it on your tray. That's all done. Just got to wait for my next tray, but I might have to replace my sugar. It's gone a little bit funny with all the melted butter. 
Okay, now we're up to the popping the jam inside the donut. And my second tree, uh, definitely fluffier, but I'm sure they're going to be fine. So now we grab the spoon and we pop a hole in the centre. Because I think, but not all the way down like I just did, Sue. Just halfway down. Grab your piping bag. Just gonna swivel that tray into two. And I've got, as I said, just it's about a quarter of a cup of jam into the piping bag. I'm just gonna squeeze jam into the center. So poke the piping bag into the hole and just fill it up. You can kind of watch the, the donut expand. So all my jam squirting inside the hole is um, done. I still need practice on that. I'm not perfect at that. <laughs> and I'm going to have to do a taste test for you. Mm. You can see it's got like the fluffiness of a donut. Because I ran out of unsalted butter today and I used sal salted butter. They are a little bit saltier, but I actually quite like it. You've got like the salt against the sugar and it tastes really good. Mm. I don't even like donuts, but I like these. And yeah, Vanessa, give this a go. Spelt flour, white, little bit of integrale or wholemeal or whole grain, it's kind of all the same. The one I used was a light version and if not, just use all white spelt flour. Pop your favorite jam in there. Look at that, jammy goodness. I'm making a big mess on my face. <laughs> Pop a comment below if you like the donuts and let me know if you've tried baking them. Stick around and I'll pop a few other videos for spelt flour recipes. My spelt buns, hamburger buns are amazing and we really love them. We have them all the time here and thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.